If you guys don't know, he is currently uh, out of his home right now. He's okay. He's just at his grandma's house. And um, so he's not near his computer at the moment. And uh, Eric is on a family call, a family Zoom call. So that, way, that is what he's doing. And Dimitri, I just sent Dimitri the link to the Zoom. So he might be joining us later here. But this is episode, um, I think we're still on like... 102 and, and 0.75 or something like that. So 102.75 of the A-League, man. I'm here with Keem right now. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking to Keem because, you know, everybody else can really join. And then while I was talking, I was like, we might as well record this, man. We might as well record this. So we're not going to go with the full topics. We're just going to kind of go with uh, kind of specific topics. First thing I want to talk about, WNBA draft. Uh King, just just how'd you feel about it? Uh, you know the broadcast and, and everything like that. Uh, I guess first of all, we'll do the overall thing of how you felt about the broadcast. Well, the broadcast, you know, it's one of those things where they, you know, they had to do the best that they could with what they, you know, with what they could do because you know, you know, the the virtual format and everything. And um, actually, you know, I, you know, I kind of, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, you know, it was, you know, like I said, it was. It was the best that they could do with the circumstances that you know that they were dealt, and I know that you know there was a lot of um, there was a lot of criticism on WNBA Twitter, which I am all neck deep in, as you know. <laughs> um, but I, you know, it was, um, but you know, there was, um, you know, they did the best that they could with what they could do. I mean, like I said, there was, you know, there was some criticism of the delayed responses. There was some criticism about the fact, like you know, like midway through the second half of the picks like you know into the second round into the third round like they pretty much just you know spit through the picks you know it was really like rapid fire type of deal but um but i feel like that it was um that you know it was they they did the best with what they could do and uh one of the things that really stuck out to me and i actually uh, wrote something um wrote something like this for uh for beyond the w.com so check that <laughs> out <laughs> i wrote something and my whole premise you know just thinking about you know basically all of us uh, you know being in quarantine and everything like that um was you know it remi- it was basically like you know you know it basically confirmed exactly you know like the value that sports has like I know that with, you know, so much going on and, you know, everybody, you know, worried about um, about the coronavirus and everything. Um, we're all pretty much locked into our apartments, into our houses and everything. But I feel like it's one of those issues where it pretty much confirmed exactly why sports has so much value, um, because it, it provide sports provide joy and the reactions that we saw from many of the draftees, like Bella Allery, who was, I believe, drafted to the Dallas Wings, um, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Willoughby, who I believe was chosen originally by Phoenix, but then was traded to New York, um, Megan Walker, who was uh, drafted directly by the Liberty, um, the same team that, of course, took Sabrina Ionescu. And, you know, it was one of those things where the the looks on their faces and just being reminded of all of the you know the the hard work that they put in to get to this point that right there provides the value exactly that sports provides and when we do get out of this and when we do get sports back i feel like it's one of those things where it's going to make us across the board you know whether you know you're a player or you're a coach or if you cover sports or if you're a fan of sports as we all are i feel like it's one of those things where it's just going to it's just going to make us really all the more appreciative um you know just because of the value that sports brings right right and you know like me personally like like you said with with a lot of WNBA twitter the delayed reactions and sometimes uh, i think it was a couple players where no, it was one player where she was just sitting in her living room and the delay was so long. They announced right. her name and they went to her crib and she was just like... <laughs> <laughs> they went and they cut their they highlights. Didn't they didn't announce her yet as being picked. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, it was Ruby um, Hebert, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, she, yeah. Um, out, of, uh, out of Oregon. The same yeah, from school. Oregon, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah the where, uh, Oregon. Uh, and uh, and, um, and uh, Satu Sabali went. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so... They, they, and, had, uh, they had three in like the... Well, when did um, Ruthie go, like 10? She went eighth to Chicago. Eight. Yeah, yeah. So three, three in the top 10. A lot of people are talking about 
South Carolina getting back to back picks, but I'm like, yo, yeah. Oregon had the top two picks back to back and three in the top <laughs> ten. But right. anyways, um, <laughs> before I get you off track, yeah, that, that's how I felt about it. Like, like the delays were funny to me. It was just kind of yeah. funny that the commissioner, you know, did the official WNBA draft from like her living room. She had her kids' pictures in the background, like above her head and stuff. I just thought that was funny. Um, not to mention uh, a couple of people uh, pointed out that not only did they have, you know, the pictures behind her, but also they had the – the, the SAP logo behind her and also the Beats logo behind her. Like, that was kind of like, <laughs> kind of like product placement, but, you know, <laughs> from Deloitte, uh, an accounting firm. So she knows all about, you know, product placement and everything like that. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? You have to, you have to, when you're, when you're responsible of the setup of the backdrop of what everybody's going to see on national TV, you have mm-hmm. to make sure you give the love to where the love needs to be shown. Sure, but, uh, right. <laughs> you know, that, that was definitely funny to me. Oh, Kennedy yeah. Carter, when, when she was drafted, and uh, she was on, a like, a FaceTime call, felt like, with Holly Rowe. And then uh-huh. she's like, what'd you say, huh? I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, congratulations, Kennedy, on, on, on being drafted to the, to the Atlanta Dream. dream. Oh, I yeah. appreciate that. I'm doing good. How about you? <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, okay. Kennedy, it's Holly Rowe. You know, it was, it was just funny there, that, that little thing and stuff that they had going yeah. on. Um, but yeah, what you said with, with the speeding through the picks about pick 16, you know, they're just automated. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they do that in every draft, M- NFL, NBA. The NBA, thing that, that didn't sit with, well with me, with what everybody else was saying, was that the way they did it, it was just like they gave Kobe 20 minutes at the beginning of the broadcast. I love Kobe. 20 minutes mm-hmm. at the beginning of the broadcast and Kobe 20 minutes at the end of the broadcast. Yeah. You can't give me those 20 minutes at the end of the broadcast. That's 40 minutes of two hours. You can't right. give me that last block of Kobe of stuff that you've already told me since January, right? On your network, yeah. right? You can't give me those 20 minutes to talk about uh, a little more in depth about those women who were drafted 16 down, the picks that you just simulated. You right. know? And I know, um, you know, our, our Lobo, Rebecca Lobo, you know, she did the best she could or whatever, talking about them when, you know, they, they asked her about certain picks and stuff. But, mm. um, you know, especially with uh, – and then that leads me into my next topic. So so how do you feel about um, uh, Crystal Dangerfield and uh, T- Taya Cooper uh, slipping as far as both of them did? That was a surprise. That was a surprise because, you know, I thought that um, – you know, I thought that, like, later on in the first round, like, I saw a lot of uh, – I saw a lot of mock drafts that um, that were out, particularly on draftsite.com and all, as well as uh, ESPN.com. I was really surprised that Crystal, D- Crystal Dangerfield out of UConn of all places and Taya Cooper, who I remember correctly was a, was a South Carolina uh, transfer who later went to Baylor. I was surprised that they fell. Kia Gillespie was another. She fell all the way to the third round. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. saw some mock drafts that, high, that had her as high as like in the first round. But I think what really threw the entire um, draft really off of its axis was um, uh, was when the Minnesota Lynx selected oh, yeah. Yeah. Herbert Harrington out of out of South Carolina, like you know Dawn Staley and everything, like you know that you know Columbia, South Carolina is a is a women's basketball factory. But I wasn't expecting to her to go above Tyasha Harris. I mean, you know, Ty Harris was their best player. But what I think really threw the drafts really you know off its axis was when the Liberty selected those two um, Louisville players, uh, Jasmine Jones and Kylie Shook back to back. And I saw a couple of people that was like, how does it that you select, how is it that Wall Hawkins, the, the coach of the Liberty selects two back to back Louisville players when you have Crystal Dangerfield and, um, and, uh, and Taya Cooper still on the draft board. Like, I think it's one of those things where, you know, Dallas has gotten, uh, Dallas wings have kind of gotten a little bit of a, uh, of a reputation for selecting uh, Carolina Gamecocks. They, you know, they chose um, Alicia Gray, who was once rookie of the year. They chose um, uh, Kayla Davis a couple of drafts ago. It's one of those things I was thinking like, oh, the Liberty are selecting so many Louisville players, especially after they chose Asia Dorr, yeah. um, uh, 
the second last overall year. last year. It was one of those things. I was kind of thinking like, okay, like is Jeff Walls going to be like an assistant at the Liberty? <laughs> so many Louisville players. But Louisville is basically like a pipeline to Brooklyn. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I was surprised about Crystal Dangerfield and, uh, and, and Taya Cooper for sure. Yeah, Kiki going number five was crazy to me. Because like you said, like Ty Harris, everybody knew she was going to be the first South Carolina player off the board. They knew Kiki was going to get drafted late first round, early second round. Um, Same thing with with Taya. Like, like I kind of get it a little more with with Taya, more so than Crystal. I mean, I guess, like, they both had concerns because, you know, Crystal's, like, very short. You know, size is obviously a thing there. Um, Mm -hmm. But with Taya, like, Taya, obviously the talent is there, but – I think you're kind of you're kind of concerned with the fact that she transferred three times. You know, you're kind of mm-hmm. concerned with the fact she graduated high school like 2014, and she's just now, you know, finished her senior season uh, or had her senior season ended at Baylor. So you know, three different teams. The first team she got in trouble over there with Tennessee and had to move on. Yeah. Um, South Carolina. I'm not sure if there was any bad blood and behind that move, but I mm-hmm. think that might definitely have something to play with uh, her going as late as she did. What I was disappointed in, of course, as you know, through the group chat, that uh, the dream kind of passed up on her so quickly with that second pick. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taya, she wanted to play for the dream. Uh, Mm -hmm. That is something that she wanted to do. She grew up going to dream games, even last year, especially now, you know, with her fiance, Dwight Howard, being the dream supporter he is. They're both there court side all the time I think that would have been a great opportunity for the dream to sell a few more tickets you know they made the move to Southside in in College Park they're trying to sell more tickets try to get the community more engaged with the Mm -hmm. new uniforms and Kennedy Carter I think Taya would have been a perfect choice Uh, when you win eight games the season prior I don't think you should be looking at me process exactly thank you When, when, when you're look when you're looking for need I don't think you're good enough to look at need (laughs) <laughs> right. exactly. You're not at that point. You're looking at best player available. Taya at the time was the best player available. Plus, she wanted to play for your uh, franchise, for for your program, all that good stuff. Uh, uh-huh. Who says that that those two couldn't uh, coexist in the backcourt in a couple years? You know, of course, you have Renee Montgomery, Tiffany Hayes, uh, Courtney Williams now. Uh, Strickland, even if you want to move her back into the backcourt, because I knew she started at the, at the three for uh, C- Connecticut last year. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know you have all of those girls already, all of those women already. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Kennedy's the future. Um, but who's not to say that you can't bring in Taya and, and that that be your, you know, backcourt dynamic duo in the future, especially yeah. when the girl wants to play for your franchise. Right, exactly. But, so, uh, but I mean, hey, it, it is what it is. Yeah. That's my little soapbox. I think Dallas did a great job with uh, with, with Sab too, and oh, and, yeah. uh, and you know Ty Harris and Ty is a perfect replacement for Skylar Diggins. Sky mm-hmm. was actually boosting up Ty Harris before the draft started, so I thought that was a nice little kind of full yeah. circle moment and stuff like that. Um, Dallas is a team that drafts really well, as I mentioned right, right. earlier. Like, you know, last year, you know, they took Arika Ogumbawale out of uh, yeah, um, out of Notre Dame, Dame and she mm-hmm. came in second in Rookie of the Year to Nafisa Kalia. Yeah, and then and the, the year before that, as you said, you know, uh, Alicia Gray, uh, Rookie of the Year 2017. So that wasn't right. the year before, but the year before, I guess. The year before, the year before. Right. Uh, I think it was she was 2017, right? Was, yeah, it was 2017 because 2018 uh, – uh, Asia Wilson, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. of the year, also yeah. from South Carolina. Right, right, also from South Carolina. So yeah, 2017 Rookie of the Year, uh, 2019 runner up, and then mm-hmm. now you have uh, a very good chance of getting the third Rookie of the Year. I mean, it's probably gonna be Sabrina if if Sab's healthy. Yeah, just based off of hype, she's probably gonna get it. But hey, you know, it's, New York helps. It's open. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, so that that's, those were my thoughts on the draft. Um, you know, those are the things I was most passionate about, but it looks like the, uh, the, the forward that the dream did get, um, you know, she looks decent and whatnot, you know, mm-hmm. welcome her and see, see what she has to, to offer, uh, open arms. Uh, a woman K, the third of woman K was drafted into the league. Obviously as yeah. late as she went, you don't know if she's going to make the roster, but if she does, that's a huge thing for that family to have 
three players in the league, uh, two big fours, and then one little guard. <laughs> uh, there was a mock draft earlier that said that she was going to get drafted to the Sparks. Oh yeah, yeah, but with all three of them there, yeah, right. <laughs> that would have been uh, that would have been uh, Lavar Ball's dream for real to have all three of the family members in L.A. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> speaking of Lavar, speaking of Lavar, I want to touch on this a little bit. I really wanted to go with this with the full team, so mm-hmm. I, we won't go fully into it. But you know, just you know, I guess we'll just go on this side of it. You know, give Lavar Ball his flowers, man. You know, uh, people have talked about him so much, tried to hate on him so bad, but you have to give it up. He's got his second kid that's going in a top three in as many as 17, 18, 19, 20. In as many as four years, he's got two of his three boys going in the top three of the NBA draft. This one, I think, is even more impressive after everything that he's put LaMelo through. And... Mm. uh it just shows you, man. Like, just I just want to tip my cap off to to, to Levar, man. What what do you have to say about Levar? We won't get into what happened this week. Uh, you right. know, obviously with the G League, we're gonna wait for the rest of the group. But just you know, focusing on Levar and, and what he's done with Lamelo. You know, just just how do you feel about that? I mean, you know, like you said, I mean, you definitely have to, you know, you definitely had to give him his props. I mean, you know, he is a, you know, he's the sort of person that, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we talked about on previous episodes and everybody's talked about, you know, his, uh, you know, what he's, you know, what he's done and, you know, how, you know, boisterous he can be. But it's one of those issues where sometimes, you know, you gotta, you know, hey, you gotta, you know, give him his props and everything. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm with you on that as far as, um, as far as him and what he's done with, uh, with Lamelo and really that whole family, so um, so yeah, and one and one of my nieces is a huge is a huge fan of, of his. Like she, he's, he's one of those things where he uh, she um she watches uh, Ball in the Family all the time. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I gotta give him his props for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching a lot of Ball in the Family now with uh you know just the quarantine. There's a lot of time to catch up on stuff like Ball in the Family and stuff like that. Right, exactly. But um. <laughs> You know, just, just uh, where, where do you want to see LaMelo? Do you want to see LaMelo in, in the New York? A lot of people pushing for him to the Knicks, get him that big attention. Or mm-hmm. you want to see him in uh, Golden State, kind of be wasted like D'Lo was in Golden <laughs> State those first couple months. Or right. do you want to see him uh, in a place like, uh, I don't know what else, not Cleveland. Cleveland has five guards already, but with Kevin mm-hmm. Porter Jr., Colin Sexton, and Darius Garland. But uh, mm-hmm. Do you want to maybe potentially Atlanta with uh, with Ice Trey? Mm. Where, where do you want to see Lamelo? Mm, that's a good. That is a good question. I mean, you know where you know you know where Levar wants Lamelo. He wants Lamelo in a oh, large yeah. market, exactly in, oh, a, yeah. in, in a New York or someplace like that. I feel like that. You know, it, I think it depends. It depends on where he fits as, as far as, you know, whichever team that he could very well fit in. Like, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I think that, you know, wherever he goes, I feel like it's going to be purely, you know, a basketball move on a part of a team. But, but you know, it's also one of those things where, you know, if it's, say he goes, you know, say he goes to a team like a New York, like, you know, that media up there is going to be following him, you know, wherever, you know, wherever he goes. Great. And it's going to be good for the, you know, for the, um, for the ball brand, of course. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's like that sort of, um, and also, like I said, because my niece, one of my nieces is such a huge uh, ball in the family fan and she is in New York. She's probably <laughs> going to want tickets to every single Knicks game. Oh, yeah, if he yeah. goes there. But I think it, I think it's, it's one of those things where it, it, it depends on, it depends on need, and you know I wouldn't mind. And all as the truth, I wouldn't mind seeing him in Atlanta. I wouldn't even mind seeing, seeing him with the you know with the Hawks at State Farm. That would be insane. People are talking about defense uh, with with uh, Trey's defense already lacking, and Lamelo. You know he's shown on un- interest on uh, defense, but I think you know. Um, shout out to Men. You know Men. Uh, uh, she recently went on NBA TV talking about it that she sees his hunger and his desire to get better defensively. Me personally, when I was reacting to his highlights a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, just the first thing you think about is his growth spurt to 6'7 and his long wingspan. I think if, as long as you have the wingspan, uh, you can be a great defender uh, just okay. because he has the tools for it. Uh, I'm looking at the mock draft right now from Bleacher Report. Shout out to Eric. Uh, Detroit 
and uh, Minnesota are one of the worst records. It's crazy seeing Minnesota being one of the worst records this year. I remember them being like worse than they were supposed to be, but to be in a top three is pretty bad, man. Uh, exactly. But Detroit is a place that, that I could see LaMelo kind of like pumping some life into that franchise. You know, obviously mm-hmm. after losing Drummond and kind of being in the middle of nowhere with uh, Christian Wood uh, doing what he's doing, Blake Griffin constantly in foul trouble. I mean, in, in injury trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see the Knicks, like we said. The Bulls. Uh, I don't know about the Bulls with, with Levine and – um. And uh, Chris Dunn, but I'm trying to think of uh, Kobe. Uh, what was his name? Uh, the, the kid mm-hmm. from UNC. Kobe White. Kobe White. Yeah, Kobe White having the season he's having. I don't know about that, but you know, well, Chicago it, didn't they just get rid of? Uh, didn't they just get rid of Gar Foreman? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, uh, everybody saying the Bulls are back because you know they have yeah. new management and, and better management. So, so I mean, we'll, we'll see what what happens and, and everything like that. Uh, with Lamelo, but you know, seeing him in Atlanta, man, would be c- pretty crazy. It uh, would. In, be, me- it would in be. the meantime, we have people uh, saying we're waiting until after the dark. I'm not even at the crib. We, we got to see. Uh, <laughs> we got to see when, when we can do it. I'm reading this live. These messages live. So yeah. I think we're gonna wait until after the dark to get into a little more. But this will be part one. Of uh-huh. course, you know, we had to open it up with some WNBA talk with the person who knows most about the WNBA in the group. <laughs> Salem. Kim, it's been so nice to catch up with you. Maybe oh, we'll yeah. be talking again at the end of, uh, at the, after this uh, part one of Jordan. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I appreciate you, man. A Lee, we back. We- Y'all must thought that I was gonna whisper the whole time. Hey, mistress, uh-huh. That means they wear like go fishing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Y'all don't want friends, I want Audis. Audi. I don't want cars, I want Rarys. Uh-huh.